What's up gearheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a oil change on both of the Corvettes. So let's get this thing rolling. Um, these do have a dry sump in them. So they're a little bit different than if you just have a plain Stingray. The dry sump system has like two oil plugs. It's not super complicated, but if you are looking to do this yourself, just be aware that there are two different oil plugs. I will be putting um, Amsoil 5W30 in both cars. I also got a cabin and an air filter for my car because I just don't know what was previously replaced on the car. I'm up to about 15,000 miles now, so I would just like to replace everything, make sure it's done, and kind of start with a clean slate, so. <laughs> I went with AC Delco, which is like the OEM replacement for Corvettes for my air filter and my cabin filter. I was going to get AC Delco oil filters as well because I like to order a couple just so I have them if I need to do an oil change quickly. I was doing some reading on their oil filters. They're supposed to do a better job at filtering everything. I forget the all the technical shit on these oil filters, but actually you can see it right on the box here. When they do testing on the oil, there's only 20 microns of uh, contaminants in the oil. So these are supposed to do a better job at filtering the oil and leaving less contaminants in the oil. So yeah, I went with these. We're gonna see how they do. Not that I'm really gonna know, but uh, maybe it'll last longer than my Subaru. What was funny is like I was doing, I was religiously running AMS oil and then I started running um, modal and my motor blew up after like two changes of modal. Uh, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but now I'm superstitious and I'm going with AMS oil on everything, so. If you do have a dry sum system and you're trying to change your oil, it takes anywhere from nine to like 9.7 quarts. So what you're gonna have to do is get the car up to running temperature, which is 175 degrees at least, and then check the oil dipstick, see how much oil's in there, if you need to add a little bit more. Um, obviously it's easier to add more than to uh, have to drain the oil and take some out. So also biggest thing is if you're jacking these cars up, you need pucks so that you don't ruin your skirts. Cars are also getting a bath today, so don't judge me. I drive this thing on a construction site every day, so it gets pretty dirty throughout the week. But if you're doing an oil change on one of these cars or lifting it up for any reason, you're gonna need these pucks so that you don't crush the underside of your car. Um, it just gives enough separation and for the jack to kind of sit on something so you're not crushing all this. Look at my new badges. I think they're so cute. Um, I'm probably gonna buy a spare set and actually paint them like this just cause this vinyl is probably going to get pretty beat up and um, peel off of here eventually, but it looks cute in the meantime. For those of you that aren't super familiar with Corvettes, um, I can kind of show you the difference between the motor that comes in a Z51 versus a Z06. This is an LT1 and this is an LT4. So you can kind of see the difference with the intakes on either car, like the engine cover, stuff like that. And this is an LT5. Just kidding, that's a C3 Corvette. <laughs> it's funny that we have three different Corvettes at the shop right now. First things first, I'm gonna take the oil cap off just to alleviate any kind of air pressure, any pressure that's in there. It makes it easier for the oil to drain. We're just gonna take this little guy off here. you can see you have one drain plug here you got another drain plug right there and then the oil filter right behind it you're gonna want to drain take both of these out drain the oil out and then drop the oil filter out all of our drain buckets are currently full Now that that's taken care of, I can go ahead and drain the oil since this bucket is now empty. Just goes to show you how slammed we've been with work because like I think the first day we were open and had this shop, <laughs> we had I think three oil changes in one night and we instantly had like all of our drain buckets full. So we've been doing a ton of oil changes. Um, as you can probably tell on the video that that was 
A lot of that was like oil and coolant mix because we've been working on this Ford truck that needs a ton of work. This drain plug, I had trouble getting a socket in here, so I ended up just grabbing a 15 mil wrench. But I'm yeah, really sorry I couldn't film me loosening it. That was a little difficult. So we're gonna get this one out. So there's gonna be a lot less that comes out of this drain plug than that drain plug. So don't be concerned if you're like, oh my God, way less oil came out of that one. I just drained all the oil and came to realize that we do not have a filter remover, but I was able to get it loose with a pair of channel locks. In case you're wondering, a pair of channel locks, you can remove the oil filter on your Corvette. <laughs> it is really tight, but I was able to get it loose. So just in case you don't have all the fancy equipment, we're working between two shops. Now that all the oil is out of the car, um, I'm gonna be putting the drain plugs back in, put the new oil filter on. Just so you guys know, you don't need to even use a ratchet to tighten the um, drain plugs up. Whoever worked on this car prior to me cranked down on these drain plugs. It was really hard for me to get them off, even with a ratchet. So take them off with a ratchet, put them back on with just a standard wrench. Don't don't crank down on these things. Just just make sure they're snug. As you can see, somebody cranked on these things on both of them. They were fucking hammered on there, but I did manage to get them off. Just give it a little tug. That's snug. You literally do not need to do anything more than that. Just a little snug and you're good. I'm actually super excited to try these filters out. Check it out. They come in a nice matte black color. It's kind of cool. Not everybody does this, but I like to fill the oil filter up with oil before I put it back in the car, just so it already has oil in it. And besides, you have to lubricate the seal um, so it doesn't get stuck to the motor. I will be getting um, single quarts next time so that I, this is easier to do. Don't do this with a five gallon or a gallon jug. It's uh, yeah, that was not ideal. <laughs> Go ahead and make fun of me in the comments. I really don't care. I just wanted to get this thing filled up. <laughs> and again, you just need this hand tight. I wouldn't even put a oil filter wrench or anything on this. I literally would just crank it down hand tight and call it a day. Now I'm gonna go grab the funnel and put nine quarts in the car. I like to always make sure my funnel's clean, so I usually spray it out with brake clean, um, just to make sure it's clean, and like the tip too that goes inside the motor. Now I'm going to put the oil fill cap back on, run the car, bring it up to operating temperature, and see where we land on the dipstick. Flash this engine bay so bad. Everything's so dusty. And I am going to shut the hood just so it gets up to temperature faster. Look at my hood, it's so dirty. Oh my god, I need to wash this thing. Now I just gotta let her get up to about 170, 180 degrees. And then I will check where I'm at, at the, on the dipstick. Add probably a little bit more oil, but we'll just see where it's at. I put a sweatshirt down just in case you guys were wondering so I don't get my seat all oily because obviously I am dirty. I'm going to try and figure out how to reset the um, oil light. So I'm not really sure how to do that. I'm going to go look in the settings and try and find, figure it out. So I figured out how to reset the oil life. Let me show you how to do that really quick just in case you're wondering how. And you don't have to go look up another YouTube video. I already have the oil life um, screen pulled up, but in case you can't find that and you're trying to locate it, you're gonna hit the left button right here and you're gonna have this screen pop up. You're gonna wanna hit the select button right here on info and you can see, whoop, it went away. You can see info is right at the top. So we're gonna select that. And then you're gonna get to this screen. If you don't see the oil life screen immediately, you can scroll um, up and down and it's one big loop. So you'll eventually find it. Now what you're gonna wanna do is press and hold the select button until you hear a beep. Now you can see we just went from zero to 100%. We are almost up to operating temperature.
you guys can't probably see this, but it's filled almost right up to the top of this line right here, which is exactly where you want it. We are good, oil change complete. Thank you.